Let's see how to migrate your on-premise Postgres to RDS for PostgreSQL on Alibaba Cloud. Basically, there are two approaches that are widely used by our clients. You can easily migrate user-created Postgres from ECS or local IDC using Data Transmission Service DTA or Cloud Migration feature of RDS for PostgreSQL. Today we will go through how to migrate with Cloud Migration feature. It's worth noting that this approach is totally free to use, and it's super reliable because it takes full benefits from physical streaming replication as our feature of Postgres. Before we start, Let's begin with condition and learn what we need to prepare. Well, as you can see, you can find all environment requirements and documentation. Condition number one, database version of both sides. Source and target should be the same and Postgres 10 to 14 are support. Let's take a look on this for the environment we are going to use later. The ECS instance where our source database is hosting is shown on the left screen and the target RDS for PostgreSQL instance is shown on the right screen. Let's check the version of the target instance. As you see, it's Postgres 11.0. Then, let's also check the version of source database, which is a self-managed Postgres on ECS. Log in the database first and execute select version to get Postgres version number. Right now, you can see that the source database version is Postgres 11.15. So the major version of both source database Postgres 11.15 and target database Postgres 11.0 are same in Postgres 11 family. Now let's move on to condition number two. The target instance should be a primary instance, not read-only instance instead. Go to our DS console and you will see such information. In this case, the role is primary instance, and it fully meets the requirement. Then let's go back to the documentation. Condition number three. The target instance should be RDS with cloud disks including SSD and ESSD. Let's also check this on our target RDS for PostgreSQL. So as it's shown, the disk type of this RDS is standard SSD. It fully meets the requirement. Let's move on. Condition number four. The target database should be empty and its disk volume should be larger or equal to the actual data size used by self-managed Postgres. Let's take a closer look on this. First, check storage size of target RDS. You can see it's 100 gigabytes and 1.93 gigabytes is used for original table, system data and metadata. And it's totally empty because it's a new instance created just then. Now check the size of source database which is a self-managed Postgres on ECS. In this case, the data is stored in the data directory. So let's use EDF-H to see how many data is there on database. As you can see, it is 52 gigabytes, and this is all the data we need to migrate. Obviously, the storage volume of target RDS instance is larger than the source database which totally meets the requirement. All right, let's move on. Condition number five, network requirement. To migrate, a data transmission channel between the source database and the target database is needed. So, ensure the request from the RDS to the source database can be accepted and the data stream from the source can be received by the target database. In this case, both VPC and security group should be checked as known to all. For local area network, only IP address in the same network is reachable without using router. Similarly, on cloud, this means the VPC of both sides should be the same. Otherwise, you would need Cloud Enterprise Network CEN, to work as a router to achieve access between two VPC. Now, let's check VPC configuration of the source self-managed database on ECS and the target RDS. Click ECS instance name and you will find the EPC ID the ECS under the instance details tab. Click RDS instance name. You'll also find VPC configurations of the RDS under basic information navigation bar. As it's shown, 
both sides are using the same VPC, which can meet the condition. Then check security group configuration of both sides. For ECS, check its security group and ensure the CIDR address of target RDS can be accepted. And for RDS, check its allow list and ECS IP address into the inbound whitelist. You can follow this guide to achieve security group condition. Let's go through quickly, step by step. Go to ECS console and find security group configuration. Find the inbound access rule, add one rule to accept all TCP requests from RDS to the post-release listening port of ECS. To be noted, the source IP address is the authorization object of one rule. And in this case, the object to be authorized is the IP address of RDS. You can easily find CIDR network address of RDS in process of migrate to cloud function. And as for listening port, you can get post res listening port through this command, netstat-a, grep pgsql. Now let's do this all together. Log on to ECS and get post res listening port. Great, the self-managed post res on ECS is listening port 5 for 32, which is also post res default port. Then manage security group configuration of ECS. Add an inbound access rule for port 5 for 32 to accept request from RDs. Save rule and move on. Condition number 6 and the rest. System configuration and user account requirements of source self-managed database on ECS. Besides the ECS security group and bound access rule, there are other factors which may result in remote access failures, such as listen address which defined in PostBree system config file, postgresql.conf. You can use find command to locate this file to see what it actually defines before doing any changes. By default, the value of listen address is localhost, which means the server only accepts access from server itself. But if you change it to asterisk wildcard character, it means access from anywhere can be accepted. However, the change can only apply after database service restart. To minimize the impact, be sure your production environment is okay with the short-term service break, and be sure to do this during your operation period. Now let's stop PostRe's database service on ECS and change the listen address. You can run system control status command to see if the database service is still currently running or not. Restart the database service after change. And log on to the database. Run SIGL command, show listen addresses, to check the latest value. After this, time to prepare a temp user account for migration. For database security consideration, the privilege of this user account should be less, and less is better. It's recommended to grant PG monitor role on this user. Let's do this on source self-managed database. First, create user and grant the role. Then change file pghba.conf to define which clients can access database as this user. In general, Client authentication is controlled by this configuration file, and it is stored in the database data directory. Each record specifies a connection type, requested database, username, 
client address, and the authentication method to use when a connection matches the record. Let's see what the given example in the documentation exactly means. Host defines connection type. It means TCP IP connections can match. All in replication specifies requested database. The value all means that it matches all databases. Migrate test specifies you can access. It means you can connect as user migrate test. MD5 specifies the authentication method to use when a connection matches this record. It means SRAM SHA-256, where MD5 authentication will be performed to verify the user's password. And the CIDR network address field specifies a client IP address range. Connections can only be accepted if the client's address matches the IP range defined in this field. In this case, in order to accept our requests from target RDS, we need to replace this field by RDS CIDR network address. Because if no record matches, access is denied. Now let's edit PGHBA configuration file together. Okay, the change is completed. Then let's see what to do. Reload the configuration to make our changes take effect. Okay, all done. Let's continue. For self-managed post reads, Besides ECS security group and listen address, which defined in postgresql.com, there is one more thing that may reject remote access. You should also pay attention to the host firewall. Because even though the port access is allowed according to your inbound access rule, the connect can also be denied if a specific host refuses port access, which defined in its firewall policy. Now let's check the firewall service status on ECS. Well, in this environment, the firewall service is disabled. This means we don't need to edit firewall policy to prevent remote access denied. But what if your host firewall service is off? Well, then you will need to add one except rule for post -release listening port, which is port 5432. You can easily finish this configuration by a few steps shown in this documentation. Well, so far we have completed all the condition confirmation. So let's start migrating the database. There are only two steps. Step 1, pre-check. Step 2, migrate. Go back to RDS console. Click instance name and find migrate to cloud function. In the left navigation bar, so you can see migration assessment. Select the source database type and configure the target RDS database. Then click next. Double check all requirements and mark. Then click next. Fill in all information required about the source database, including IP address, database listening port, authorized username, and its password. For IP address, both public IP and private IP are okay to use, but private IP is much better regarding network stability. Run the IPA to display private IP of ECS. Copy and fill in the blank accordingly. After this, click Create Migration Assessment Task button. And you will see a new task display below. Then click View Report in the last column of Task List. When the task status turns from running to successful, you will be able to see task log in this area. Then let's go to step 2, migrate. Switch to migrate to cloud tab and refresh the pane. Click create cloud migration task button. Confirm source database information in the prompt window and click the button to start migration. Once submitted, you will be able to see a new migration task. 
and you can see that its initial status is pre-checked. In addition, you can click view logs to see details of the task, and you may have noticed that the task status is now changed to full backup. It will turn to incremental data synchronization after the full backup is completed. Now let's log on to the target RDS and check if all data is synchronized successfully. Well, we can see there is a database named test on target RDS and it has 60 tables. Let's also check the data in the source database. If there are no exceptions, it should be the same as the target database. First, list all databases, as expected. There is also a test database and source post breeze. Next, let's check how many tables it contains. Well, as it's shown, 60 rows, same to the target database. Since the task is now in the incremental data synchronization phase, let's add some tables and see if we can synchronize the changes to the target. 10 tables created successfully. It now has 70 tables in total. And now insert 10 million records into each table. Next, check target RDS and see if new tables are there. Great, we can see that 10 new tables have been synced. Then let's move on. It's time to switch over. Click switch over on the console. To ensure consistency, you are required to stop source database service or set it to read only mode before switch over. Click the hyperlink and see how to set read only mode. It's quite easy to do such change but your application will be not able to write to the database after that. Therefore, please switch over within the operation time that allows service interruption. Then let's set the source database to read-only mode together. We can finish using two commands and then check current value of the corresponding parameter. Then read and learn other changes after switch over. Check all cautions and continue. Refresh the page about one minute later and you will see the task completed successfully. By now, the migration is complete and you are free to change the database connection straight in your application configuration file. Okay, congratulations and thanks for watching.